Tansiri and Banks, Captain Santa Banks and Santa Hello. 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 And we're going to be talking about uh, weapons in fiction and fantasy and uh, you got the usage weapons and creation weapons in those um, things. So guys, uh, w what about weapons? What are the, the main points about weapons for fantasy and fiction? Can you guys remember from the Quackcast? Hmm. Let's sound off a list quickly. While you are not that drunk on me, maybe. <laughs> I'm very drunk on so, me. So, uh, don't use weapons that are super embellished and fantastical unless they are plot points. Uh, learn to like the, the dull yet elegant simple versions of weapons that are actually deadly and can do the job and will convince your readers or your viewers that that you are <laughs> that they are, your your character is actually you know able to kill something except his dignity um, <laughs> <laughs> and also consider the resources of your characters and the access that they would realistically have to the assorted weaponry of your of your setting or your world. Yeah, that's all, just about all that I remember. Very well remembered. Very good points. Yes. So, um, uh, keep it simple, stupid. That is one of the primary kind of um, tr um, things, pillars that people should uh, remember when uh, using weapons in fiction. Um, Primarily in, in reality, people use a lot of uh, like basic weapons that are really boring because everybody uses them. And you think, well, my fiction has to be special, so I have to use some kind of fantastic, interesting weapon. But there's a good reason why people use simple, normal weapons. You know, like the Glock 9mm pistols, you know, the AR-15 assault rifles, um, shock pop action shotguns, um, long swords, katanas, all these, these kind of things is a good reason for it because they're applicable to every situation very easily. Tricked out machine guns with uh, laser sights and grenade launchers, they're only applicable to very specific situations and nothing else. The battlefield, either battlefield wep weapons, uh, specific tactical weapons, you know, to be used in like, um, like uh, specific situations, Speci special for forces. Sorry, I've I've been drinking lots of mead because I'm a warrior, a Greek Norse fantasy warrior, and we drink mead, and I drink a, a fuckload of it. So I'm sorry if I'm slurring because of that. Um, so th those are the kind of things. So there's a good reason why people use simple weapons, but exciting tricked out super uh, assault rifles with you know the laser sights and the great aid launchers are fantastic for specific uses so if you're intelligent enough how to to know how to use them they can be fantastic in your story so they can you know say you're like a weird science uh interesting movie i think it was weird science or no not weird science S my science project the guy gets a um, like a, 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 mich a sub uh, uh, M16 or whatever I don't know what they're called. Anyway, he's got this rifle. It's got a grenade launcher, um, which is a useless weapon for a lot of situations. It's only a, like a specifically a battlefield uh, weapon. But he comes across a T-Rex and he shoots its guts out with the grenade launcher. So there you are fantastic usage of that weapon. <laughs> it had this yes. usage. If your character has a gigantic sword, it could not be used in the majority of situations because it's too big to draw, too big to use, because it'll bump into walls, roofs, ceilings, everything. But in the specific uh, situation where it applies, 
it's inv invaluable. Why is it good to know how to use weapons the right way times? Why is it good? Why is it good to use weapons the right way? Because it's the right way, maybe? Well... Um, okay, the, the reason to use weapons the way they were created is, well, first off, because it has, like, lots of thousands, even, of years uh, of cumulative knowledge and technology behind it. Uh, so... Yeah, so it's basically the streamlined, most efficient killing thing, a very killing-friendly race has created. So That's a uh, beautiful oxymoron, I love it. <laughs> so best, best is to use it, I think. And uh, because... Uh, there are many instances in history where they have tried to actually realistically make fantastical weapons that were not really efficient and they were abandoned in very few years. So it has been tried, it has been done, it has failed. Uh, let's let's not do it again. <laughs> let's not speak of it again, like laser crossbows. <laughs> Just like laser crossbows. We, I was thinking of a way to reference the laser crossbow in here somewhere. Um, yeah, it's kind of like you think of the physicality of the weapons in your story, how they actually work. And also, Tan's made a great point in the longer podcast about how, um, you know, a, a, a group of insurgents or the underdog group would probably either have very outdated weapons, kind of that work a little roughly and are, you know, 20 or 30 years old. Or possibly have you be using weapons that they have taken from their enemy, you know, the enemy forces. Like thinking of all that stuff can really give, you know, even if every reader or every viewer doesn't really pick up on everything, it can feel more. It will feel more real. It will have sort of exactly. that feel. Exactly. It'll feel more uh, relatable real, understandable, logical. If you've got logic to your work, then it becomes more um, real to the reader. Things make sense in a way that they don't even have to think about. It just makes sense automatically, which makes the writing more real to them and more relatable, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, if you follow the rules of, say, um, the amount of things a person can carry, uh, you know, your, your character obviously is unlikely to be able to carry 15 long swords and uh, 30 rifles with 200 rounds of ammunition. If you have, you know, if you keep that in mind, then you can have something else that, that can be a plot point, you know. Your character can only have uh, five round, uh, like, seven bullets in his gun and you've got to count those down and then you've got a Dirty Harry situation, you know, do you feel lucky, Bunk? Well, do you? And that becomes a thing that everybody remembers because it's so iconic. And every, you know, when you look at that scene in that movie, everybody's trying to work that out. How many bullets did he have left? How many did he shoot? And if yeah. he didn't have enough, then his character's going to get killed by this uh, this bad guy. And if he did, then he's going to shoot the bad guy and blow his head off because it's the most powerful gun in the Western world. Yeah, iconic moment. And it all comes from sort of keeping to the reality of that gun only holds six bullets. And like, yeah, to the reality of the mechanics of, of that gun. It's great. Exactly, yeah, things like that. If, if, uh, if in fiction you're treating it like a video game where you've got unlimited ammunition that takes people out of the reality because everyone in knows that's not quite real and that makes your stuff look false and silly and dumb so you can make your, your writing look more immersive, more interesting you can have more drama if people realise you know, shortly your character will be uh, unarmed um, also for like fantasy weapons, you know, lasers, they run out, um, uh, the power in your lasers isn't unlimited, uh, they can, you know, burn out, whatever, uh, magic spells, 
You know, your character shouldn't be able to keep on doing spells and fells and fells and fells. No, there should be li limits on that to make that more interesting, or else there's no drama, no. Um, yeah. Tension. You have a no small god there, you know, god mode in everything, so. Yeah, you shouldn't god mode every bloody thing, unless your character is a god, though, and then it doesn't matter. And me. even then, there are limits. <laughs> Good point, yeah, even then. Should always be limits. So there you are. Um, last point is about, uh, say, handling weapons is a good way. If you if you're doing fiction about uh, like uh, like uh, some kind of drum with guns and things like that, it's a good idea to to uh, look at them on YouTube. You know, know how they sound, know how they handle. If you can handle them in real life, but that's not as easy. That can be a lot more difficult. So YouTube is a good thing. Say swords is. Like I collect uh, uh, antique swords, I don't really have that much in my comic, but you know, I know how they feel like and look like. <laughs> so there's that. Tarts has, has gone to like museums to handle and see real machine guns and rifles. To see, to see, my scene with the, the, the guns and stuff. He, unfortunately, he, I wasn't able to charm him enough to open the cases for me, so I could touch the things. But. Mm. Uh, but I have I have uh, had other occasions where I have actually found guns. And Bane's legal a, legal occasions. Legally, where I have. legally. Bane's, of course, <laughs> you, you bathe in a bunch of Glocks every morning in order to keep yeah, yourself exactly. pure and young, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank okay. you. As, as <laughs> is the Canadian way. That's how we do it. <laughs> Glocks and hockey sticks. Yeah, Glocky sticks. <laughs> Glocky sticks, I love it. I love it. Oh. So there you are. Lastly, <laughs> and, and then Sholto. Lastly, we I will have, have to check out very, very quickly. All right, this this quack cast is over. I'll have links to um like YouTube channels of people who you should look at, like Lindy Bade, Scholar, Gladiatora. Lindy Beige and Forgotten Weapons, which are some of the best ones of um, uh, Scaligram Nielsen as well. Alright, thank you very much. Um,